The character of Mark is described by maintaining the stability of solution where uh, mass market providers fail to do so or need to restore, resort to explicit dynamics. That applies to, for example, buckling and vibrations, um, multiple dependent contacts, self-contact problems or combination of these cases. Uh, you should see, see slide three. Um, fudge free, extreme strain, elastomer handling, where, for example, constitutive models with highly nonlinear path dependent properties like hysteresis routinely present serious issues. Structural instability um, uh, can often not be treated at all um, in this case, or has to be treated in isolation instead of under the desired load cases. And finally, I'd like to characterize Mark by discussing the handling of material failure. Uh, in a graceful and accurate fashion. Now, I use the word failure, but key examples of that failure are intentional and controlled, also known as cutting, um, and give um, Simufact a quick mention, um, a sort of front end for the Mark Solver that's been used um, to make groundbreaking manufacturing process uh, predictive solutions like uh, in additive uh, forming and welding um, processes, which again may apply to you in various um, scenarios, in particular, I'm thinking welding to um, repair an existing damaged structure. So in short, the character of Mark is extremely annoying because it's too easy and it sounds implausible when explained. The plus side is that when even your competitors end up sending jobs your way, then you know you're doing something right. But yes, fundamentally, it's a nonlinear FEA package specialising in the toughest problems. Use cases abound, uh, seemingly mundane, but also on inspection, often close to effective analysis. Other cases, less mundane, are often time consuming and not repeatable or highly approximate. So maybe think about the pipe impact problem at the bottom right hand corner. Not so much unique, um, but often slow, difficult to repeat, difficult to actually get right. Um, I'm having a few um, messages come up in the bottom right hand corner of my screen because I don't know what I'm doing with Teams. Is there a pause needed to answer questions now? Uh, no, I think just you go ahead with the presentation we'll and, and answer them at the end. All right, thank you. Um, so I'm proceeding to a kind of a summary of selected capabilities. Now, please, please forgive me if I end up waffling off on a tangent because there's too much to explain um, at the current time. You should see slide six. Um, Mark is defined by unique results. Behind the scenes, there reside a small selection of unique analysis capabilities that, that drive those numerous um, unique results. Um, I accept the proof of the pudding is in the eating, but the eating slides are coming up shortly. From the preprocessor, one of relatively few unique facilitating technologies driving all this, which you'll see will be a range of remeshing techniques driven by the analyst's specifications. That means to say it can be done automatically and will be done automatically. However, you can drive the um, you can drive the logic by which it is uh, determined and where in the model it takes place. Hence local or global remeshing and so on. Um, these facilitate a number of the unique capabilities I've uh, referred to and uh, shown in the slides. Um, for example, cutting, failure, buckling, post buckling, crack development modeling and so on. Uh, slide seven shows some of the available physics feeding into what I just discussed, building on the narrative that this is a truly general, um, general purpose uh, nonlinear finite element system. We're not reliant on uh, using convenient choices for the material parameters, far from it. Um, indeed, even using uh, MSC Digimat, another little name drop um, in the presentation, you can even uh, generate, let's say, continuum style FEA models of microstructured materials, so materials that are actually a lattice work or materials that contain um, exotic fiber reinforcement of a particular um, uh, matrix and, and so on. Um, I've highlighted a few capabilities that we believe might be of particular interest on the slide. Amazing, you're halfway through. Slide eight. Um, this is just designed to be a banquet of unique mark capabilities, but Although I've used elastomers um, here to show uh, self contact um, buckling, post buckling problems that um, in these cases 
resulted from everyone else failing to 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 organize it first and my consultant um andy uh, cranking it out in an afternoon you don't have to use elastomers they're just the most difficult case which i selected for the purposes of rank showing off um the second to last uh, sort of general slide has to do with uh, failure mechanics in a range of materials. I particularly like the gear failure case um, bottom left in the matrix um, slide right, um, which I, I like to say demonstrates the multiple contact issue, um, potential strain rate dependence issues, um, which we excel in and cases where typically the the rapid uh, variation of the force displacement and uh, such relations in the uh, constitutive model and um, required the use of uh, explicit dynamics, which we can do for you um, as well or better than anyone. But it, it would be as, as well to, to, to avoid that um, in the interest of uh, efficacy and repeatability um, and not needing a whole gaggle of specialists to carry it out for you. Um, for one thing. So I'm going to move on now to um, the final uh, general slide, which is uh, an, a seemingly mundane case, which I believe can save you um, millions um, of euro on its own. Um, this um, kind of prototypical, very um, boring looking case, perhaps. But this is a seal which was worked on by m for, for months by um, what is, um, you know, unfortunately an incumbent um, in the industry. Um, and finally, um, the, the pride had to be swallowed and MSC was approached. And you've got two minutes. So now to finish with a few examples. This is a case of um, highly thermally dependent, so softened by, um, by heat, uh, a steel manufacturing process. You can see the shearing away of the material as facilitated by the dynamic remeshing. Um, it's one of many yield damage models uh, that are available. But, uh, you know, here is the, the nice animation to show the kind of thing you can achieve. This is perhaps more of a standard one, but um, if I were able to present the entire programme of research, um, you'll, you'd, you'd see that it involved uh, systematically checking out various um, composite reinforcement um, strategies for pressure vessels. In this case, you'll see um, some metal cutting taking place, but you know, typically if you look at that sort of indentation and spring back, you'd expect that to be done by explicit software. That's not necessary in the case of Mark um, by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, think, for example, impact on a, on a pipeline by an anchor or something, uh, typical oil and gas of that kind, and think in the end you'll have uh, an outcome which gives you the the uh, plastically deformed, damaged, potentially heat affected material properties or um, whatever other uh, constitutive modelling considerations are needed in order to kind of do the path dependent um, follow up to this uh, case. We then follow on to maybe a process you would potentially use, you should see slide 17, to then repair the damaged material um, using that um, damaged um, highly deformed pipeline, you may then want to determine what sort of fasteners could be used um, in situ to penetrate the material in a convenient way without the need for drilling and so on. Um, you can tell I'm not an oil and gas specialist, um, but I do believe this is um, highly relevant. Um, also name drop, um, try CAE fatigue for determining what the fatigue properties will be after. Slide 18, just a little picture. This is an example of a metal cutting application. Uh, you can see the remeshing taking place. And in this case, the cutting tool was um, monitored for aware um, as well. But note that the material properties as modified at the surface will also be recorded by such an analysis. This is the example from earlier, which I won't dwell on. I'm going to give you 20 more seconds, Sass, if you'd like to wrap it up. And this is the uh, a tailored example that we organised with a, a number of small idealizations. But you can see that this pipe is being, uh, you know, constructed of structural steel, it's being sheared. Um, uh, I believe it was um, 
So it could be a work over uh, mm. a simulation of well intervention, cutting for pipes, coil tubing, and again, this you can get force reactions and a lot of testing goes in API 6A, uh, where you know you're trying to make sure that the wire cutting is happening properly, and you know you retest, and there's a lot of money spent. But again, you know you can you can do that with Mark probably better than any other uh, software out there, and we can help you do that. And the training is available as well. So yeah, go on, Seth. Thank you. It's yeah, uh, indeed. There's um, there's there's no problem. There's no probably about it. Uh, indeed, um, you can see the CPU requirements um, fairly efficient. Um, you could add details to this model, but frankly, I'm not sure that you would um, need to. Um, a few more pictures of the same uh, business taking place, uh, so you can see the deformation a little bit more clearly. Um, we deliberately kept the model light in order to make sure we had it ready on time. <laughs> and um, yeah. That concludes the uh, presentation.